I see faces out there. I do. I see faces. Hey. I can hear you now, too. Oh, good. Hey, Renee. <laughs> hey, Kelly. <laughs> Good morning. Yay. I'm excited. We had a lot of people uh, pre register. Y'all are doing a great job. It's a, I mean, such a great group and I'm so excited about this program. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I see it. There are the people. Okay, good. I like to see the people. I like to see what's in your houses, wherever you are. This is cool. <laughs> good. I see my cat's asleep still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's cats. I need to go to gallery view. <laughs> <laughs> She's asleep in her hammock thing. Over there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, I needed to see a furry being right now. Yeah, we got the, the dog is waiting over there. <laughs> oh. Everyone's still a little sleepy in this house. Good morning. <laughs> I've got my kitties in the window right here. Oh. <laughs> so that's really your house with all this work <laughs> behind? Yep. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I just got like a little light curtain. Thingy. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I'm always sad when Christmas is over because I like the sparkle. Me too. Yeah. It's definitely helped for all the Zoom meetings. <laughs> I thought it was a fancy backdrop thing. <laughs> where Where did you acquire this magical light curtain? So I, I bought it off Amazon. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would guess it's bringing you some joy right now. So that's a nice thing. It looks get a lot of use out of it. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, I see a little doggo over there with I Julie. See. What kind of dog is that? <laughs> this is a bean. Oh. So beautiful. He's bean. He's a Yorkie. Oh, so cute. <laughs> hey, Maris. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Maris. Hi. How's it going? Did anyone else get caught in that storm last night? It's crazy. My husband did. did. It was insane. I couldn't believe I was like, I shouldn't have. I'm like, I should just stay where I was. I, I didn't even know we were supposed to get that much rain. The, the water was pooling on the east side on Gallatin, like all the little dips and everything. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh. There's a um, serious like stormwater drainage issue on Gallatin. It was it was intense. I thought my car was gonna get stuck. How are you, Miss Kelly? Doing good. Yeah, are you at work? No, I'm at home. Oh, I got my light wave. Light wave. Yeah, I see you. I see <laughs> you looking fresh over there. From the top up. I love it. <laughs> 
Um, I was going to say, let's see, what was I going to say? Did you guys, um, I had talked to you guys about announcing, um, or I emailed and I was wondering if you could announce or at least try and get the word out that Zero Waste Trash Talk was looking for someone that was um, efficient or really good at WordPress. Yeah, um, Maris, if you send it to the TN Women in Green Gmail, we'll put it up under um, our job and volunteer page. Oh, it's on the job and volunteer. You might have already done it. I'll, I'll email again. Um, I thought I included that one in the last one. And then the other one I was, I emailed was just the podcast, you know, just putting the podcast on the page too, just to get that out there. Um, we're trying to make the next, we, we skipped a week because this was a, a bigger week for other things. We felt that we wanted to kind of take a breath. Um, but we have some really, really awesome podcasts on the way that we've already, you know, we're trying to stack them up. We had one with Compost Company was really good. I don't know if you ladies uh, saw, but we are also going to be interviewing Metro Public Works on the 12th. Oh, awesome. And yeah, we're excited because, you know, these are the type of conversations we want to have, um, hopefully to, you know, get the transparency that we've always wanted, which is really hard to fight for. Um, and then we're just kind of moving more into like a, a political stage because we want to make the changes. So we know that the only way to do that is get more knowledgeable on all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. So anyways, um, yeah, I, I did email, but I can do it again. Um, Renee, yeah. I'm going to see you later today, hopefully. Yes. So. yes. Um, yeah, email it again and I'm sure it gets up there today. Cool. I don't, I don't see that it's up there right now, so. Okay, cool. Then that's what I'll do. I'll email Tennessee Women in Green with that info. Excellent. Gracias. Yeah. Does everyone like my hairdo today? I did it just for you. <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also in Janelle's pup that I'm seeing right now. Wow, that is magical. Oh, Where's the puppy? Wow. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh pretty. <laughs> dog. Bring us your dog. Wait, are we, doing, are we doing dog show and tell? Renee, you should bring yours out. I'm going to steal mine. Where is he? Oh, wait. Kind of, hey, she's kind of sleepy. She's in like a dead pose right now. Oh. <sighs> Say hi, Sam. Say hi, Sam. Aw. We got a bath yesterday and then went straight into the mud. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Mine just looks really <laughs> pathetic right now. Oh, there's Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she wants to still. There's Penny. Penny, go now, baby. Oh, hi. You, oh, is that an Aussie? She's a burner, Bernie's mountain dog. Oh, He's a big baby. We do need more play dates. I like the wall behind you, Clara. Oh, thank you. It's my thrift project thing. I've been like, I, my goal is I don't spend more than 10 bucks on anything. And I just collect them over time. And I finally started to put them up. So. Oh, wow. They're beautiful. Uh, during a lockdown. But thank you. I did it too. Really cool. Being so good right now. <laughs> Carol, <I can't> see. <laughs> Puppy time. Oh, so cute. Oh, that's a cute one. So what else has everybody been up to? I start week or work again next uh on the fifteenth, which is crazy. It's been like three months. A hot box? Yeah. Nice. We're, uh, wow. we're opening on the 15th and um, it's going to be, I have a meeting today and then I think next week I have one just for like all the different, we're a very different kind of gym because we're so hands-on, well not hands-on, but we're like very close. It's a heated Muay Thai cardio kickboxing gym, ladies, and it's, it's for the ladies. I mean, we got some cute guys in there, but it's for the ladies and in my opinion, we're empowering the women, but um, 
It's a hot room, so wearing a mask is going to be interesting teaching, um, because I talk on a microphone, too, so I don't blow my voice out over the loud, crazy music, but it's going to be uh, interesting. Everything is different. <laughs> but if you guys want to come and try it out, we're opening in less than two weeks. Hell yes. <laughs> and Claire is ready. I'm nervous. But I'm excited. <laughs> I don't see Grayson in here yet. I know Grayson's on the hot box train. <laughs> but I'm so far though. <laughs> oh yeah. Is that that's another reason why, yeah. So far away from hot box. Where do you live? I'm in Gallatin. Yeah, that would be a like line. yes. The I mean Hip Gallatin ain't so hip, you guys. Like, oh. Their racism is loud and clear on their Facebook group, like, the last couple of days. It's disgusting. Mm, bummer. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah, some yeah. people, obviously, like, but the, the voices of people who are, like, anti-racist are much um, fewer and far between. It sucks. Well, we're trying to root all that out. I know. I would say hip Antioch is the opposite. It's very progressive. <laughs> it? <laughs> <A> new hood. <laughs> mm. You're in Antioch now. You're not my neighbor anymore. I know. Dang. But it's good to be a homeowner. Yeah, congratulations. Wow, that's a big <laughs> deal. It is. Right on. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. <clears throat> I haven't seen Kanita join yet, but I know she's working on it. I'm gonna go grab a little more coffee. And so the program will start um, right at eight, uh, but feel free to chat, talk, do whatever. Um, until then, and then at eight o'clock, I will mute everybody. Okay. Hey, hey, this is Diane, and I just want to welcome Nina. I invited her, and she came. I'm so excited. Hey, hi, Nina. Hi, Nina. Welcome. <laughs> and and also, I saw Jerry here, and I haven't seen you in forever, Jerry, and I don't. So I'm glad to see you too. Thank you. Uh -uh. I don't know. There it is. Hi. It's good to be here. It has been a while. I think with my work schedule, it's been a little more difficult to, to log on, but it's it's good to see you ladies. <laughs> well, I just realized that I can pull the screen over so I can see more people and the presentation, which is cool. Yeah, you just pull that whole thing. I don't know if anybody else is doing that, but I can see almost everybody, almost. Kelly, you're muted. It looks like you're trying to talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was just saying, yeah, there's different options for how you can view everybody and you can move the, the little boxes to whichever side at the top. Yeah, that, that thing in the middle, if I just pulled it, there's like a little pulley thing and I pulled it over. Now I can see everybody, which is oh, nice. Cool. I think if you're on, like I'm on an iPad and I don't think I can do that. I think it might be limited on like your phone or like your I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I was on a thing the other day and the lady was on a phone and it was harder for her to get any kind of movement like that she wanted. But it's handy too, I guess, to have your phone. So. <laughs> hey. Oh. 
All right. I just wanted to say hi, my name's Miranda. This is my first meeting. Thank you, Kelly, for inviting me and Renee. <laughs> Yay, Good Miranda. to see you all. Welcome. Miranda. I'm so, so happy. happy you're here. Yeah, so happy you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> So Miranda, tell us why you're at the twig meeting. What's your interest in twig? Um, I have always been um, thinking about sustainability. I'm a graphic designer and an artist. And so I try to reuse and recycle as much as I can. Um, I seek out um, sustainable papers or papers that have, are 100% recyclable. Um, I, in my calligraphy practice, I have been experimenting with, uh, found objects, which is a lot of fun. Um, so you don't have to have a pen or, um, any fancy tools. Like one of my favorite things to use right now is like a medicine bottle and you can load it up with, um, in the grooves and it actually makes a really, really nice organic mark. Um, so yeah, I'm just very much, um, been recycling for as long as I can remember <laughs> and conserving. Miranda, I just looked you up on Instagram. Woman, you're talented. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> follow. <laughs> Dang. Thank you very much. I, um, I love what I do. I'd love to hear from other people who are new about why they're here. So I'll, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm David Piper, and I work at the Young. Uh, Jessica Wood uh, referred me to this kind of meeting. I'm friends with her. And I, I care about sustainability because I care about the future of the planet, trying to prevent global climate change and stuff like that. So uh, I wasn't sure. I, I uh, wasn't sure if this is the right place, if there's like a um, male oriented one that I should be attending instead or <laughs> <laughs> Twig everyone is everybody. welcome yes welcome yes. David it's good yep. to have you here uh, can you hear me yes uh, I'm Janelle this is also my first meeting um, I'm finally uh, awake in time <laughs> I've been um, following Twig for, I don't know, a year or more. And finally, um, you know, now in-person meetings aren't happening. And I finally made it to this one because <laughs> it didn't require much more than just setting the alarm a little longer uh, earlier. But um, yeah, I, I really wanted to be here to hear um, Kanita talk about uh, Trap Garden today. So. Um, yeah. Welcome, Janelle. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to see your art. I'm also an artist, so it's always fun to like, I don't know, you know, find, find your people out there. <laughs> yeah, Janelle, uh, put your information in the chat so we can see your work. I'll do the same. Okay. If I can find it. <laughs> I'm not very, I'm, oh, I'm not very savvy at navigating this. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, found it. Found it. Okay. Got it. Um, hey, I'm Diana. I'd also like to um, welcome Krista. I just saw Krista join and she's, um, our newest sponsor is Next Tracker, and she's with Next Tracker. So, welcome. Oh, wow. Thank you. And, um, Thank you. That's it. <laughs> oh, there's Chris. <laughs> well, thank you, Diane. I appreciate it. We're happy to be here. Good morning, everybody. Tracker. Hi. Good morning. Um. Okay. Well, Next Tracker is a um, utility-sized um, 
a solar tracking company. We, we supply the tracking equipment for um, large um, solar power plants. Cool. So they um, allow the um, modules to track with the sun, east to west. So um, I guess maximizing the amount of energy you can produce. Oh, so are they residential size or just? Oh no, it's uh, it's utility size, so it's. Um, oh well, okay, D you're doing good work. Well, thank you. Um, are your other two colleagues in Nashville on, or do you know? Um, I did send a text to them today. I don't. Uh, yesterday uh, to remind them, but. Um, I'm not really sure if, um, I'm sorry, I'm not facing my camera. I'm not really sure if, um, if they got it in time. I know that both of them usually work kind of late, so they may not be up as early as the rest. Of them. We'll make sure that they join uh, regularly from now on. got really quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> um, so we will be starting in about 10 minutes. We'll hand over to Sue. Was anybody able to go to the march last night? I saw that it was really incredible and thousands of people and 100% peaceful, I think organized by a group of teenagers. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that uh, they they estimated ten thousand or more. I heard that nice. they like the the teen um, for equality account. I saw I saw the number twenty k. I don't know what it meant. Like I don't know exactly what is the number, but yeah, it was it was transformational for sure. I was there. It yeah, was it was definitely way bigger than any other marches that have participated in. I was, I was really, really impressed. And there was no um, hostility anywhere. Every, it was really good energy. Awesome. That's awesome. My brother lives in Portland, Oregon, and where he lives is like where they've been meeting up for the marches every day. And he's just been sending me incredible photos. And they did a I guess like a die-in where everybody kind of lays down over this massive bridge. And I have an image of it that he sent me that's just like breathtaking. It's crazy, literally. <laughs> yeah, I went. It was awesome. Pop-ups team went. That's great. It was fun. Someone needs to mute their phone or their device. Yeah, the echo thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some wicked, just wicked photographs. Just really, like, powerful. It was really powerful. It was really powerful. I think, um, Sorry, I just muted everybody real quick because there was a reverb. But you can unmute now. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say we we have to like stick with this because if we let it go, then it'll just get forgotten about like all over again. Um, yeah, I mean that's really all it is. We have to keep going and keep pushing, um, and keep it right in their faces. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. And I saw some really interesting information about some local businesses just and just like things that are coming to light. You know, this week is everything is unfolding and unturning like information about companies like Project 615 and Corner Pub Green Hills and 
uh, bold Patriot Brewing Company that I think everyone should be aware of and educate themselves about and just know where they're spending their money. I'll leave it there, but. And Stephen Smith. Um, yesterday, I actually took a field recorder out there and tried to talk with a few people on um, our black community on just like what they were feeling. And I think Michael and I, if you guys don't know, Michael, Britt and I, and Jess Johnson created Zero Waste Trash Talk last year, which is basically an activist group and we just turned everything into a podcast so we can reach more people and um, talk about issues that surround not only anything that surrounds sustainability, which we're, we're coming to realize that the environment, you know, we always known that we're all connected. You know, we're, we, we're in the business of saving the planet, which also saves humans, which humans are in trouble right now. And with the virus and everything, um, we actually got a book sent to us before it came out. It's called uh, Our Future Earth. Um, and I'd be happy to share that with anybody. Michael and I are reading it. He just read it. I'm about to read it. And we're going to actually have him as a guest on our podcast. But we're centering um, a lot of our talks right now on what's happening. And we don't even want to be talking as much ourselves. We want to hear from the Black community. So um, if anybody wants to reach out to me, actually, I'm going to change my name on here to my email so that um, if you want to, if you have any ideas or if you want to, you know, I, I think it's important to keep this conversation rolling, like especially with our, you know, our platforms like Twig and stuff. I think that even just changing the direction of, of what's happened, you know, it's great that we're all invested in the, in the, in the environment, but it's like, this is what's happening now, you know, so it's like, how do we include the present, the present in, in, in what we're doing, you know? So I'll just change my name to an email if anybody has any suggestions. Thanks, Maris. What's that author of that, Our Future Earth? Is that let what me, it was? Yeah, let me go grab the book. Let me go grab it real quick and I'll, and I'll show you guys. I know some uh, Twig members read the Inconspicuous Consumption book for the, um, the Twig book club last month. I just got a chance. I actually got the audio book and I could not, like, it's amazing. It's a little, I think it was written, you know, probably like 10 years ago, but um, still very relevant and just great information. The Future Earth, I'll put this in the chat. It's The Future Earth by Eric Holthaus. But I'll go Can ahead you, and put this in the chat. Is that the same book you were talking about, Kelly? No, I was talking about inconspicuous consumption. Right. So will you put that in Ooh. the chat, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, Ooh. I want that one too. <laughs> and if anybody hasn't picked up this one, it is really phenomenal. And like halfway through, it's the How to Be an Anti-Racist by Abram X. Kendi. It's a really, really good read. Um, and I've always been an advocate for the black community and I'm even learning things. So I think it's just really exceptional stuff. So highly recommend. Did you put that one in the chat too? Any, any books, put them all in there. <laughs> yes, that Abram, that Abram Kennedy book, it, um, I, I don't know, I might've butchered that pronunciation, but um, that's been on my reading list forever. And he also has a children's book um, or it's just a book for parents. I'm not sure. I've heard amazing things about it. It's called How to Raise an Anti-Racist Baby. Um, yeah, I'm getting that for a friend. And obviously, if anybody wants to kind of trade or borrow books, um, if you're okay with that regarding the virus and germs and stuff. I'm always looking to reuse, guys. I'm such a like book hoarder. <laughs> I really wish that they would incorporate something like that on Audible to where you could trade, like, trade your Audible books with each other. Like, they've already been yeah. bought and paid for. So yeah. I thought that that's how it worked when you, um, like when you gift a book or you like send a book to a friend or whatever, but it still makes the other person pay for it. Or like you can only gift a book once or something like that. But I don't know. I also could just not really know how it works, but <laughs> um, yeah, I think especially because that's usually 
how books get circulated is just person to person passing them around. So it just seems like a real missing piece to the Audible platform. Totally agree with that. That's why I canceled my Audible membership and now I just use Libby. I'm like, screw it, I'll wait or I'll buy the book, you know? Audible is so frustrating. I'm pretty, I've been pretty hooked for, <laughs> for several years. Um, I tried doing the Libby and um, I don't know, I'm just not, it, I feel like anything that I have to say is what I can't figure out on line. <laughs> All right, everybody, I just want to let you know, um, right at eight o'clock, I'm going to mute everyone uh, and just stay muted throughout the presentation unless uh, Kanita asks a question and then feel free to unmute yourself um, at that time. I'm also going to switch the chat to where the chat comes to me. If you have questions, please put them in the chat for Kanita and we'll kind of ask those at the end. Um, I'll ask them to Kanita and then, then we can all unmute and chat again later. <laughs> All righty, so I'm muting. And Susanna, you can take it away. Thanks, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. My name is Susanna Medley. And I'm your 2020 TWIG president. And I'd like to welcome you to our June monthly meeting. This is our second virtual monthly meeting. And we had so many people register. Maybe you can hear me better now. We had so many people register that um, we may be breaking a record today. So that's really exciting. Um, we're really excited that everyone has really jumped on the virtual platform. And we appreciate everyone being here. Um, we're really thrilled that everyone's had so much interest in Kanita and Trap Garden, and we look forward to hearing her speak. I'm having some technical difficulties here, so if you will bear with me one second. Um, so the format of today is that we are going to have Kanita speak, and then afterwards she will do some questions and answers. So if you would hold your questions until the end, or you can ask them in the chat box, um, we would appreciate that. After Kanita speaks, uh, Renee Barker is going to go over some announcements and some really cool things that have happened in the past month, um, especially with uh, Big Payback. We had a really good, successful year with Big Payback um, last month. So we're really excited about that. Um, anyway, well, I can get my password going. Nope. <sighs> All right. Sorry about that. Go love virtual meetings. Um, anyway, um, if you would keep yourself muted until the end, we would appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Kanita so we can go ahead and get started. Um, if you have any feedback after the meeting, please let us know. You can email us anytime at tnwomenandgreen at gmail.com. As I said, this is our second virtual meeting, so we're still trying to get all the kinks worked out and we always appreciate your feedback. Um, I know a lot of you have done many more virtual meetings than we have. So uh, with that, it is my honor to introduce Kanita Hutchinson. She is the current program director for Trap Garden. Her passion for agriculture and sustainability grew from her love of food and helping others while volunteering to positively impact the community. So listen and learn a little more about Kanita, about Trap Garden, and um, she's gonna tell us some ways how we can all get involved supporting their mission to engage in a trap experience. 
And with that, Kanita, the screen is all yours. I got it. Good morning, everyone. I'm just waiting to share my screen. While we get that for the sharing of the screen, I want to say thank you all for tuning in today on this wonderful 804 Friday morning, first Friday of June. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, it's good. It just says that it's still waiting for the host to disable participant screen sharing. I'm sorry about that, Kanita. Darn. Oh, no problem. Do you have, um, can you try it now? Okay, let's see. Yep, we are on there. Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Okay. So we're starting our PowerPoint. So. Trap Garden. Our motto is for you, for me, for us. So today I'll be talking about, again, like Susanna said, a little bit about myself, more about Trap Garden and how you guys can get involved within your communities as well. So a little about me. I am a alumni of Tennessee State University receiving my Bachelor's of Science in Agriculture Sciences with a concentration in biotechnology. Yes, it is still a mouthful. Um, then receiving my master's again from Tennessee State in Ag Business Management and Analysis. My journey with Trap Garden first started off as an intern. So having the opportunity from my GIS professor, I was like, okay, it's something that I know and I believe that I can do as an intern, something that's not far away from campus and still getting a chance to be involved within my community and still give back to the students on campus and around the surrounding areas. From there, they loved me so much as an intern, got opportunity to be the volunteer coordinator, did that for about a year. They loved me again, upgraded my position up to community gardens and projects. With the opportunity, I got a chance to really see the baseline, getting, making sure that the community members were involved on what they wanted in the community gardens to help set up different raised beds, different produce they wanted to grow, whether it be different fruits, vegetables, and flowers and now serving in my current role as a program director. I get a chance to do great opportunities such as this. So this image is from one of our Earth Day events two years ago. So no matter if it was raining, hot, 100 degrees, we love having our volunteers out as well as having different sponsors to contribute to definitely get back to our mission. Um, like I said, my passion for ag definitely came in for my love of food. If you all love food, you definitely always wanna kinda know where it comes from but then also understanding the people that prepare your food, whether it be the farmer and from your farmer all the way up to the table. So you have that farm to table aspect of it. So let's talk more about Trap Garden. Our mission is of three main things, to educate, to empower the community, and then increase the availability of assets of fresh, healthy food options. So with that, we wanna help build, sustain, and empower food insecurity areas. So now being from Atlanta, Georgia, compared to living in Nashville, there are different areas where you do see from your grocery store based on where individuals live in. So having people to rely on their bus routes, Ubers, Lyft, sometimes not always the most reasonable or their most convenient transportation to get to a grocery store. So with that, we always wanna make sure that we're educating the public on nutritious values. So I know some people don't like tomatoes or may not like eggplants or cauliflower, 
But with that, we want to educate them on ways how they can pair in different meals, as well as how it's kind of helps their body and their well-being. We want to empower our community members with different workshops so they can kind of visually see and put in that physical work of working in the community garden, as well as helping out volunteering at our different programs that we have. Lastly, with increasing the availability and access to healthy food options, train that community garden. When you have a community garden within your area, you're more likely to go and visit that. So that's our main mission that we always want to strive for. And again, health is wealth. A nice shirt there. So one million. Can you believe that one million people in Tennessee as of now, from 2015, are including 200,000 children live under low-income communities? Kind of just sink that in for a minute. At 200,000 being children, we know when we were little kids, having that energy, we also have to make sure we fool our bodies. Having that, those grocery stores that we have that may be close by, sometimes the food isn't always the greatest. Whether it be a rotten tomato, a spoiled cucumber, and always not having those price range that's convenient towards those individuals within a community. So with that, you always want to look at where these community gardens being located, as well as grocery stores. Sometimes you shouldn't always have to rely on a grocery store, but should always have various options available for different people, no matter their background, how much they make within their salaries, but always making sure that they have that ability to have a fresh produce, food options to help fuel their bodies, as well as their children and others around them. So, you guys can unmute your phones on this one, or if you're on your iPad or your laptop. How many people during this quarantine have had some junk food? Yep. Me? Hey. Definitely. Yeah, out of that junk food, sorry about that sound, guys. I'm gonna mute it real quick. I've been uh, eating way too much candy. <laughs> just chocolate I'm a uh, junk <laughs> I'm junking on some uh, Slim and Husky OG rolls right now so no shame <laughs> dude I literally bought every flavor of non-dairy Ben and Jerry's at the grocery store the other day <laughs> there were eight all of them are delicious in case you're wondering tough times you know Especially in the morning, so I give it to you on that cinnamon roll for sure. And yes, I switched. I switched up my scenery, so I am outside, kind of get some fresh air, and the nice birdies are watching my presentation as well. So I see they wanted to listen in too. So I wanted to make sure they weren't too crazy out here. But yeah, so with that junk food, have you noticed that when you watch TV or different ads, you see more advertisement for junk food or maybe not so healthy food options compared to a salad. I know recently I started to see commercials for Chipotle, Whole Foods, and Publix, but you kind of see how those advertisements for junk food weigh out more than your healthy food produce to help kind of cleanse your body, give you more energy throughout your day, whether you're working out, going without having that coffee sometimes. I know a lot of people get energized through coffee, while others do a nice smoothie to kind of help build back that potassium and that protein for their everyday life. So with that, advertisement does play a big role. So we're going to compare it to tobacco companies. They advertise the children. Whenever you go to the grocery store or even the gas station, everybody has to get gas when they're in their cars. The first thing you would see either plastered up or on their walls will be a poster with either cigarettes, Gatorade, liquor, or something of an unhealthy substance. So with that, food companies have to do a better job in promoting healthy lifestyles as well as ensuring that people are aware of their health because when you have more advertisement for junk food, unhealthy food options, tobacco, things of that nature, you're somewhat more likely to be tempted to be in that role of, okay, maybe it's not that bad. It may always be on sale, but it's always at my convenience compared to fresh produce that's easier for people to get to as well as the cost efficiency. 24 million, another big number. Out of this 24 million, Americans are affected or suffer from type 2 diabetes. Just type 2. Out of that number, another 79 million people have pre-existing symptoms of diabetes. Now, what does that mean? 
Now, this study was taken back in 2013 from the New York Times, but understanding those numbers, 24 million, then 79 million, is it based off where they're getting their food from or poor diets? It's a little bit of both. When you think about that for those pre-existing pre -existing factors of diabetes, some people say it's genetics, others say it's based on where people either grew up or what their normal food options may be. I know sometimes I add a, a little extra sugar every now and then to certain items, or I may take on an extra bite within my chips. But understanding that my health is important, I have to also be cautious of how much food that I do intake. So even if I have a salad today, it won't just change my diet or my health overnight. You have to kind of be consistent with that, as well as taking those baby steps. I know now within the year 2020, a lot of my friends are either vegans or pescatarians. I'm still going to eat my meat every now and then, but understanding their different roles based on their health, as well as having a different health journey as other people to make sure they do have that accessibility to health food options, as well as making sure they're still going to do their doctor visits and ensuring that their community is informed about their health as well. So let's get into what Wonderful Trap Garden does. So we do it provide, we wanna make sure that we're empowering our community, promoting healthy lifestyles and developing future leaders. So this is where we learn more about each of those three. Empower the community. When you empower the community, you're allowing the community to grow with you. Having our community garden, so this image here that you see is in our South Nashville location. It looks way different now, thanks to the rain, quarantine, as well as social distancing. But making sure that we provide and get back to our community to let them know what's going on through each season, year round, more so than seasonal. So it has been known that when you grow your own, you're more likely to eat what you grow. So if you start off with your tomatoes with a seed and then have some basil seeds from there, you are starting off with something that you started. So this is my tomato plant that I'm going to make sure no worms, no bugs, no mice, no snake, nothing has any hindrance to that where at that point you're building patience as well as different STEM levels that we teach our students, which we'll also talk about. Within that empowering the community, you also have a more accessibility and increase to consume those fruits and vegetables that you grow. And even if you have any type of flowers, some people do end up taking those, cutting them off and put them in the vase to take home. So we have a nice video for you guys to view from our Earth Day event. Uh, make sure you guys can hear the sound great. And I'm gonna share my computer sound now. So with that video you guys saw, no matter how old we have our individuals come out, whether they're two, all the way up to the most wisest people, we want to make sure that everyone gets involved in each aspect of our Earth Day events, community engagement events as well. So next, promoting healthy lifestyles. Again, like we talked about, quarantine has not been the greatest for everyone as we're saying, so making sure that we do kind of supplement out those 
junk food or non-healthy items for those healthy options, we want to make sure we provide people with ways after you have your community garden, you start off with your seeds, and then from there you harvest your best tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelons, cauliflower, broccoli, whatever it may be. We want to make sure that you're able now to learn how to prepare your meals. So with that, our cooking demonstrations are free to the community. And for, I know, two events that we had recently, we allowed individuals, like the first 20 people, once we did our cooking demonstrations, they were able to go home and take those ingredients that the chef used to recreate the meal. We primarily want to make sure that we can have individuals recreate meals for under $20 to help feed a family of four. Not a four for four from Wendy's on an everyday basis, but something that you can take home and kind of be more involved on what you're putting into your body, as well as that preparation on how long it takes for a lot of the food. So with that, we want to focus on new food options for people to try. So ugh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. For the longest, I was not a fan of cauliflower. We had our chefs from the City Farm Co. come out to do a cooking demonstration. And I want to say maybe four or five years ago when the health, health, the health documentation that was on Netflix, it was a lot of controversy on what people were donating based on getting more information about healthy options, having these big corporations funding people on saying, well, is medicine great? Does our food kind of supplement for medicine? Different ways for that. So we made it to a conversation where it was an open table conversation where people also got a chance to watch the chefs prepare the meal, which was cauliflower rice. Again, like I stated, I wasn't a fan, but I got hooked after that. Having individuals actually get a chance to visually see one thing and learn about cauliflower, from there, cutting it up, seasoning it different ways, to then translate it to a healthy meal that you can constantly have over and over again that's affordable and under $20, it definitely makes an impact. A lot of people have different myths on if you want to eat healthy, organic, or kind of say within a certain range of health, within a certain monetary value, it's kind of out your limit. You have to super over budget for that, but honestly, you don't. I know I just saw a post not too long ago, and I should share it with you guys. On the post, it had a regular burger from McDonald's for 99 cents, compared to a salad that was $7.99. But once you break down those ingredients from that salad for at least seven days for a serving, that salad would then cost you 33 cents from something that you made yourself, and that's also easy to recreate. So with that, we wanna make sure that we always allow individuals to kind of ask questions like, okay, how long do I have to cook the cauliflower for? Can I add different spices, different seasoning? I never try eggplant. Is there gonna be another cooking demonstration about eggplants and how to prepare that? We wanna make sure we keep these open conversations for individuals to come back and still try some new foods. So with that, we have another video. This one is our fresh bites. I'm gonna fill this up. We had a sweet rice and like you know I had been like, Ooh, I like it. See how you can't it's almost like the sweet rice. Let me let me he transitioned already. Let me give let me get mine off. Look like Tata. What you trying to get it? I ain't trying to die. Smell sweet off rip? A little bit, yeah, it smells kind of sweet. Smell sweet, what does it look like though? Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen it like this before. Tell us about it first. Nah, 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 it's sweet. And it's clearly chicken. It's coconut. <laughs> it's At coconut. this point, y'all just lying for reactions. So I told you that was also a vegan dish, would you believe? I mean, Rob, you know, you're a pretty trustworthy guy. So I'll take your word for it. But does it taste like a vegan dish? It don't taste like vegan at all. But I don't even know what vegan tastes like. Mm -hmm. I don't. All the thoughts I have about vegan is gone. I don't. I don't. All, what do they call them? Preconceived, pre, yeah, preconceived, preconceived notions. They all gone.
to be honest with you guys, that has to be one of my top favorite videos. The reason why I say it because does anybody know what vegan really tastes like? I don't think so. But having the opportunity to have different community members to give their raw, authentic selves on trying new foods, like Rob said, sometimes you just never know what you have, but they believe them. And it is just different ways that people will have different conceptions of healthy food options if they've never tried it before. So developing future leaders. So as I stated earlier before, I started off my journey with Trap Garden as an intern. Um, as my intern opportunity started, I got a chance to learn why Rob started Trap Garden. So his background with it was one, he was also a Tennessee State University alum. And with that, he realized that the grocery store that was in our area by Tennessee State, this University, Vanderbilt, Meharry, Lipscomb, Belmont, did not sell the best produce. And again, being college students, we don't always have that wonderful luxury lifestyle, having a salary job or having availability of having different funds to go out and get healthy food options. Now, if you kind of go back to your college days, some people may not always have the best options for food. So that late night calf snack may have been a pizza. Or for some people, those noodles, a cinnamon roll, a Cheetos, whatever it may be. So when Rob realized that that was an issue among college students in their areas, he then realized, what is the next step that I can do? So he found his fairy godparents over in the community garden. And from there, they took him under his wing to learn more about gardening. I know a lot of people may not have a green thumb. I have finally been blessed with mine being in the ag department. And then now I also wanna make sure that I'm involved in today's society too. So with COVID-19, a lot of people are at home. So being at home, some people have went out to Lowe's, Home Depot, their local nursery stores to buy a house plant. House plants can definitely bring great joy to people and towards that developing future leaders, you get a chance to really see how those different plants can also help through your day-to-day -day life. So with those house plants, you have to water them so that keeps you on a schedule, making sure that you're being organized to know what's going on with your plants. Where you have different herbs in your area, you learn more about patients and seeing how much sunlight they may need, what different meals you prepare with it. But some people may not always have the best of luck of growing what they have in their new homes or kind of being at home more often. With that, that's why we also went back to talking about our empowering community. We want to make sure that we're providing people with a resource to reach out to us as well as knowing their community members. So if they see someone out there watering their tomatoes, hey, when did you water your tomatoes and why do you water it so often or what type of tomatoes do you have? Through our developed future leaders, we have an established K-12 program to recreate different programs throughout each season. So we've established value and sustainability projects. When it comes to sustainability, TWIG has definitely been on the grind for doing that. And I definitely want to always shout out Leah for the Turn Up Green Creative Reuse. I started volunteering with them and then seeing how a lot of the materials that they bring in can definitely be used for different resources. So for one of the, one of my favorite, <laughs> I love because you guys are going to really kind of see where we come from as an organization, our volunteers in the community. So we have our Univista Eat, Grow, Live program with our amazing third graders. They are amazing, they are bright, and they are brutally honest. By being brutally honest, they provide us with insight on how to kind of talk more to adults as well as as kids. As kids, they will let you know what's up. So we provide them with different healthy food options that you would never think a child has ever experienced. So I know when I was in elementary school, middle school, high school, when we had snacks, they were probably like a bag of chips, um, a little fruit cup, orange juice, or milk. Sometimes those didn't always mix together. What we provide to our third grader has been hummus, guacamole, a quinoa salad, and a pescatarian and vegan option for Slim and Husky. So imagine that. And our volunteers like, y'all give them this? We said yes. And so towards the end of that, they also get a chance to get some of those snacks as well. Of course, developing those future leaders, our volunteers, we always wanna hear their feedback on the impact that we made and how they feel as if they impacted the students. With the students that we have, they're always willing to learn more. When are we going outside? So at Buena Vista Elementary School, they do have a community garden that we do make sure that we are fully invested in, as well as making sure that we're incorporating some curriculum activities outside instead of always being in the classroom. 
So with that Slim and Husky Pizza, the two programs that we had prior to that, we had the students figure out what's on their pizza and what do they like towards vegetables. So they said basil, tomatoes, cheese, oregano, some like corn, some didn't. So we had to split the pizza in half. So, you know, make your own pizza. And from there, they got a chance to actually grow that in their garden to see once they have that finished product. So as we talked about earlier, that farm to table, how can we recreate that so students can see, as well as our volunteers and adults, how their food is being prepared to make a finished product. So for our other program that we did with Toyota's Green Initiatives, we visited three HBCU universities. From there, it was a crash course. By crash course, we were there all day and all evening to get a chance to work with some brilliant and bright students on how they can get their campus involved, as well as a community on hosting an Earth Day event. So we know this year, Earth Day was kind of uh, a little pushback, thanks to Little Rona, but a lot of people did give back in various ways, whether it was making donations, getting involved to either clean out around the community or just kind of staying at home to look at different resources they can provide. So our next video is from our Toyota Green Initiative at Central State University. Kind of got to move some things over for a little bit for you all. All right. Everybody come outside and turn up with the Toyota Green Initiative. We got games, prizes, music outside right now. video I wanted to play twice went a little bit more promo there so I'm gonna start it from this current slide here so as we talked about the way that the students get their campus involved they you had your professors faculty staff every aspect of the university gets involved in these Earth Day events that was hosted with Toyota's Green Initiative in partnership with Trap Garden so imagine you just walking down from class and you see, what, what's, what's, what's that? What's over there? It makes it more engaging on starting a conversation. As we talked about earlier, for those who went to the protest, I did get a chance to go. And a lot of people are starting to get more educated. So when you educate people and trying to talk to them more about your interests, whether it be in gardening, um, equal rights for everyone, you start to learn more about different backgrounds. I know some people have never ever planted anything before outside of them working with their grandparents helping out with their garden some people have never had a green juice i started to kind of incorporate that into my drinks every now and then but having that exposure to people and having different outlets on how you can kind of spice it up in different ways so i know some people instead of adding milk because some people may be lactose intolerant some people add almond milk or a different a different nut supplement milk um, some people may not use milk at all or any supplement. Instead, they may use coconut water. So with that, we want to make sure that we're providing different alternate routes for a healthy lifestyle, as well as make sure people are physically well at all that we do with whether ball trap garden or just getting their community involved for each step that we take. So let's grow together. With that, I have included our at name for trap garden. So it's at trap garden for Instagram. For Facebook, Trap Garden, as well as my personal Instagram account, just underscore Little Hutch. So I hope you all enjoyed this presentation. But before I wrap everything up, we get to our questions. I also want to give a special shout out to other organizations that have been doing their part within their community, whether it be health and sustainability, um, different increases for 
individuals, whether it be low income, middle class, high class, on providing healthy food options. So it's the Ronald McDonald House Charities, the Nashville Food Project, Hands on Nashville, Turn Up Green, Credit for Use, the Second Harvest Food Bank, and of course, Trap Garden. Um, I have very been fortunate enough since my time being in Nashville to work, volunteer with all these organizations. So getting involved within your community definitely shows that, okay, if you're not able to make an event, but you know you really wanted to go to, always tell a friend. I know it's been many times I have to be like, oh, I really want a shirt. Let me go to this event. But I always have to make sure I level out my priorities to make sure that I'm providing the best self that I can provide to give back to a community that's in well need or maybe not. A lot of times we have to think of others, but still work on ourselves to make sure that we're living our best life, but also encouraging others to do what they can to provide for others. So, are there any questions? And with the questions, we'll reveal a nice picture featuring a Trap Garden member, people from the community to make sure that everything is being inclusive to show that we really get back to our community and getting others involved. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, do you know, do you have any idea of when um, volunteer opportunities are going to open back up for you all? Thanks for that question. Here's your image. Yes. So, <laughs> still being on a very safety precautions, we have done a lot of strategic planning for when volunteers can get out. It's still going to be a TBA because a lot of things are going on and they want to make sure that we have enough tools for everyone, gloves, and still social distancing. So right now it's at a standstill, but you can mm -hmm. always go on our website and stay in tune with our Instagram page and Facebook and we'll keep you updated as well. Um, I have a, one more question. Um, I won't give you far, an extra picture. I'll save it for the next person. <laughs> I, I, I'll just savor this one. Um, uh, as far as uh, the uh, supplies, like you mentioned, like tools and gloves and things like that, do you all, do you have um, uh, a way for those supplies to be donated or, you know, to kind of ensure that there's enough of things for everyone or, um, you know, something like that? Yes. Do you so, have like a supplies needed list somewhere or? So a lot of times prior to we do our events, we get a lot of sponsors to donate a lot of the materials that we'll use. And then also with that, we have our event right and on our website to make sure that for when volunteers come out, so let's say you wanted to come out with 10 people, we made sure we have enough supplies for everyone prior to that 10 people, as well as make sure there's enough activities to be done. So with the gloves, we haven't washed them to reuse them because again, even prior to COVID-19, we want to make sure that we're stretching out our cleaning, um, cleaning initiatives for people, as well as the tools amount that we have because a lot of times you'll have people who's like, oh, what do I do? But we always make sure that we're planning to make sure that after someone's done weeding a bed, they can go into the next step, helping someone start to break down some plants to transplant, or even going ahead and start peeling off some basils, peppers to harvest. And with those opportunities that we have for a lot of volunteers, they always get a chance to take something home. So we always wanna make sure that we're providing to others. And then we also make sure towards, like you said, that supplies list of things needed. In our emails, we make sure that people know what to expect, different clothes to wear. Um, we always encourage to cut down on single plastic use that people are bringing reusable water bottles. So with that, people do want to come out and bring their garden gloves that they may have at home. They're more than welcome to do that. Hey, Kanita, I've got a question from Sarah Edmonds. Um, she asks, has TRAP felt supported by uh, Metro government recently, especially during the, the coronavirus shutdowns? Do you guys feel that you're supported by Metro? So as a nonprofit, I will say that a lot of, a lot of people will associate nonprofit equals no profit. But we have been getting different donations from individuals who want to kind of get back out there with the organization. And I know there has been different grant opportunities that we have been filling out to kind of answer that question. But more in depth, because we are kind of on a standstill with getting our volunteers out due to COVID-19 and everything that's going on, it's not so much that we want to go ahead and rush different plans. We still want to make sure that we're being loyal to our staff as well as to the community as well. Um, I saw another question from Elaine Boyd. She says, great uh -huh. presentation. Um, <laughs> and just asked, uh, are you seeing an increase in the number of African-American students pursuing environmentally based careers? Yes. So <laughs> the reason 
you'll see an increase in just African American, just people in general. So it has been a shift, like I stated earlier, on people going into vegan, pescatarian, organic. With that, more people want to learn about how they can get more in tune with their health and based off of the produce that they buy, whether it be fruits and vegetables. With the increase in the fluctuation, agriculture isn't just farming. You have biotechnology, business, marketing, the different aspects of it that people are now kind of want to get more involved with. I know with people being at home, it has also been an increase of people having at-home gardens. So no matter if you have a small studio set up, a home, an apartment complex, a lot of people have really been incorporated on how do I get involved on my health as well as trap garden. So after this full presentation later on today, we'll have a nice video to drop on how to transplant. And also on our website, you'll see how to provide and use your small spaces. It's kind of like a tongue twister, but use your small spaces in different places. So creating an at-home indoor garden with different herbs to kind of utilize what you have at home. Um, as we talk as we talk about future leaders and students, kind of hearing more about agriculture and sustainability, people want to have more of an interest of what is it, how do I get involved? So if people don't pick it up as a major, they're also either pick it up as a concentration or get involved in different clubs and organizations. Hey, Kanita, I have a question. Hello, you get an image. Good for you. Thanks for the shout out. Um, I have a Wait, I can't see everyone. Hold on, let me, let me try to make a full screen. Okay, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Yay, still in my pajamas. Um, I have a very selfish question. Uh-oh. <laughs> and you don't have to answer if you don't feel comfortable. But I know at one point, right when you graduated, which we were all so proud of you, you were looking at opportunities outside of Nashville. Do you, there's been a lot of changes lately. I'm just wondering, especially with your you know, growth in your position at Trap Garden, do you think you'll be around Nashville for a bit longer? I really don't want you to leave. <laughs> no. Really, I know Rob and me just had this conversation not too long ago. He was like, um, when, when did you say you were leaving Nashville? Is it soon? Is it later on? Like I said, so being from Atlanta, Georgia, my parents have still bugged me. When you coming home? When you coming home? So tomorrow's my birthday. Yay. So I think my mom should be on the call. If she's not, I'm going to let her know what's going on. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> but as far as my transaction and being involved in Nashville, it has truly become a second home. Now, Atlanta's four hours away with a different time zone from Central to Eastern. I feel as if the impact that I had made in Nashville, as well as still going back home to Atlanta and still being involved in Trap Garden and then introducing other organizations that I have been involved with here, it has definitely was like, where do I want to go? So to answer your question, I'm traveling, I'm moving, and I'm grooving. So with that, <laughs> now I'm still in Nashville. Um, soon I will be pursuing my PhD. Don't know where yet, but fingers are crossed for, for the money, for fellowships. And I know with that, opportunities will come its way. But yes, Lee, I'll still be here in Nashville for sure. And uh, basically just getting a chance to travel to still make sure I'm spreading the wonderful love of Kanita, all these wonderful organizations, <laughs> and still make that different partnerships. And the people that's on this call get a chance to kind of get involved as well as spread a little bit of themselves to different people, no matter where they go. Well, wherever yeah. you end up, they will be so lucky to have you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I know too we talked about Zoom. Everyone's on Zoom, so Zoom makes everyone connected. Right. <laughs> thank you. Um, we've got a question from Jen Harmon who asks if you all have uh, incorporated composting into Trap Garden. Yes, we have. So in our South Nashville location, as well as our Buena Vista Elementary School, with our Eat, Grow, Live program, we do have a compost for our South Nashville location. It's kind of in the corner. Um, recently, that has been uh, MIA, but with that, we still are making sure that we provide either those weeds that we have from the garden from when people come out, that we're placing them over in the corner in a compost bin to kind of start that generation of an active compost and a non-active compost. So for those who don't know, an active compost is a compost where you're constantly either turning it or involves a worm to kind of break down your material that you're putting in there. So the favorite term is gonna be your greens, browns, and skin, like your tomato peel, not your tomato peel, I'm sorry, your banana peels, your newspapers for like your browns and grass clippings. 
And then for a less so active compost bin, something you're kind of just turning either once a month until it gets to a certain level where you kind of rotate with that. Over in our Buena Vista Elementary School community garden over there, that compost bin is kind of stacked up. It's like a tumbler. So that's also being utilized. And I also have one at home. Like I said, being at home has really put me really uh, in a space of understanding more of how to still be 100% involved within the community and outside in the convenience of my home. Kelly, I think you're muted. Um, Jocelyn says, happy birthday. What's the one thing we can all do for trap garden, sustainability, et cetera, to celebrate you on your birthday? Ooh. <laughs> Send me coupons for food. But as you read to trap garden, tell a friend about trap garden. I know someone said it earlier, when it's time for us to officially go back outside to be more social together without the full distancing, come on and volunteer. So that would be definitely something that I wish for my birthday for tomorrow. And go like our pictures on Instagram, go like our page on Facebook, get involved, share, repost, the nice things you can do as well. That's awesome. All things we can do from home too. <laughs> yes. Um, I have, oh, go ahead. Nancy. I was, yeah, I have uh, maybe not so much questions and observation. I used to run the Bell, the Bell Garden, the Bellevue Edible Learning Lab uh, for a couple of years. And I was always amazed at how little was known about growing your own food. Mm -hmm. um, some, some generation, I don't know if it's mine, the one behind me, but somebody had dropped the ball on teaching kids about agriculture. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, really amazed me was when the kids would taste the actual food that they had grown. You know how when you would buy a tomato in the grocery store that has been uh, grown in California and then spent weeks being shipped over here and you'd get it and it would taste like mush, it would taste like nothing. And when they would get the vegetables out of the garden and taste what real food tasted like, it was amazing the difference in, in how they would, uh, you know, really go after the good foods at that point. So this is really important work. Kanita is doing a huge service. Um, I, I just can't emphasize how important that is. Yes, yeah, so um, as we talked about empowering the community, when you grow your own and know that that time that you use to invest in your seed, to harvest that best tomato, bending over to get some tough weeds, getting a real garden, <laughs> yeah. you're more just invested on what you grow. And it's just like, I grew that. This is the best tomato I've had. Um, and a little bit more about me and on your statement that you made about people growing their own. So I did my thesis, proposed it, and it's published, yay me. My thesis was over, whew, it's, it's a long one, but assessing and analyzing location, economic impact, and the values of community gardens surrounding metro, metropolitan Tennessee, well, no, it's been a while, but within the Tennessee area. Within that, um, we also had the Bellevue Community Garden listed on there, the Tennessee State Community yeah. Garden. I wanna say maybe 30, 35 other locations in Davidson County and Williamson County. What a lot of people don't realize is that there is a difference compared to community gardens to regular gardens based on what they grow, what they're using, as well as who it's pertaining to. When it involves a community garden, you're specifically working with the community as well as outside community. When it relates to how people are getting involved, a lot of things are being documented. So I learned that people aren't keeping records based on how much they grew, when they grew it, how many pounds they grew to either have an economic value to it or having different benefits within their community on the produce that they spread out to give to other people. So one thing with the community garden, a lot of people just gave away their food, but they had a large abundance of certain items. If they weren't going to eat it, it's no need to kind of give back to that food waste. If they wanted to compost, they could, but they were also willing to provide to their neighbors. 
knowing let's say Kelly love tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelons. Those kind of be like the main thing that I've been seeing as well too. I'm more willing to share that with her. But other people in those community gardens, they're willing to share their seeds. But knowing where community gardens are located, I definitely want to say that's also a big major thing that we have to do, just not in Tennessee, but in other surrounding states. Throughout the research, I called over to the Elliston Agriculture Center. They were able to provide me some information, but still it was kind of just like a dot, dot, dot based upon where certain locations were. So I know with us, we had a location over at the Dream Center. If anyone was familiar with that area, when it got sold, we also had a community garden over there. But due to what individuals wanted to do with that area, that partnership was no longer available to those individuals in that area because they did not no longer want that community garden. So within that process, you also have to locate to figure out, is it still an active community garden? Is this a land for lease? Or what's being utilized in that space? So that's definitely important to kind of know where your community gardens are, as well as making sure that people grow their own, even if they don't grow their own, they get a chance to know what's going on with different areas within their community. Uh, well, I guess just the well, last question. question. Oh, sorry. Well, we can just uh, do one more question if you want to ask that, Julie. Yes, I do. Um, I'm curious about the Buena Vista Garden, the school garden there. Um, is that one of the schools that's being combined? Say that one more time if you don't mind. Sure. The Buena Vista Garden, mm -hmm. is that one of the schools that's being combined? What do you mean by combined, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, there were a couple of schools where they're combining the schools. Um, they're talking about shutting down some of the schools and combining them into other schools. For that, I am not sure on, and I can look that up to kind of get a verification on that for you. But as far as what we do with that community garden, it's mainly for the students that we have for our Ebro Live program. Outside of the community, I know now with the school year, being at a, a halt for now, and then them going to their next fall season, those items that the students did get a chance to grow to start up as seeds, we send those pictures off to those teachers so they can send them off to the students. I know this year we kind of had like a late, a little funny growing season because it snowed all the way in February. So the students weren't able to kind of see that full process of how items were grown. But we do take what we have in that community garden to still provide to others in other locations. And I will make another that as well. It's that school part of the combine. And that was Julie, I got you. Awesome. Well, um, I guess that's about time for questions. And let's see, I will hand it over. Kanita, that was an amazing presentation. Thank you, um, thank you. Oh I guess goodness. it's the last picture too. So this is the team that we have. So starting from, I guess my left, you guys is right. We have Sarah, we have Rob, we have artists, we have Danny. Behind Danny, we have Donald. And in between Donald and Danny, we have Kimberly. And in the back with the sign, it's me, Kanita. <laughs> that is awesome. What a great team. I really want to get involved with Trap Garden. I want to volunteer and learn and do a cooking class. <laughs> Come out. <laughs> so now I guess I will um, hand it over to Renee. everyone. Thank you so much, Kenita. That was awesome. And I do just want to say the links to the videos that she showed, we will have those up on our website. Um, so you can go back and share those. Um, and let me see, I'll get our announcements up. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, hopefully. You guys can see this. Um, so welcome everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Renee. I am our current vice president for TWIG this year. I know we have a lot of guests, um, so I just want to thank you for coming. Um, these are just our monthly announcements. They'll be really quick, and if we still have some time, feel free to hang out, ask Kenita more questions, um, network with each other. We're so happy that we're able to do this virtually. So our mission is to empower, inspire, and connect women who are committed to environmental sustainability. Thank you everyone for your support. 
especially thank you to our sponsors. We couldn't be this active without all of our sponsors. Um, so we have a long list here, of lots of logos. Next Tracker is brand new on there. I know we talked about that before the meeting started, if you missed that, but thank you Next Tracker for joining. Um, if you are interested in becoming a sponsor or maybe the place you work for uh, would like to be a sponsor, just check out our website. We have a link that shows you how to become a sponsor and we have different levels um, that come with different perks. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about that, just email us. Also want to shout out to our new and renewing members and sponsors. These are all the newest members since our last meeting. So thank you for joining. Wow. Um, for those of you who are new to TWIG, um, we are so happy that you came. Once we are back in person, um, we do have these monthly meetings. We also have volunteer events. Um, networking events, our book club, lots of things going on. So we would appreciate if you became a member and that info is also on our website. It's good for one year since you sign up um, from that day and we would love to have you guys join us. A little bit of review from last month, we participated in the big payback. Um, the one day, 24 hours, actually it was over two days this year, 24 hours of fundraising from the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. And we were able to exceed our goal. So thank you so, so much. We raised $2,610 and we really, really appreciate those who donated to us. Um, we did get the extra sunrise award for being up very, very early. Uh, so thank you everyone who set your alarm for 2 a.m. or <laughs> I think it was 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, we were able to have the most unique donations in that window of time. So we got an extra bonus prize, which was excellent. Uh, so thank you everyone for your support on that. And you can see our campaign of our uh, board members and um, a few of our TWIG members leading up to the big payback. We share their stories on how TWIG has impacted their life. And uh, they're really, really great, really heartwarming stories. So check that out on our social media. Upcoming meetings, um, we are still getting the rest of the year finalized, uh, but we have our next monthly meeting is Karen from Westmead Elementary. Um, so it'll be a very similar format to this. Uh, we anticipate that we'll do this virtually again. Um, and I hope you'll join us. Uh, Karen is the librarian at Westmead Elementary. She's been there for about 19 years. And she um, was asked to collaborate on their community garden and teach kids about healthy food and um, where food comes from in the food desert that they were surrounded by. So uh, we were looking forward to that meeting in July, Friday, July 10th. So usually we have our monthly meetings on the first Friday of the month. Um, but because of holidays, sometimes that gets changed. So uh, just mark your calendar and keep an eye out for our newsletter and our website and our socials for info on that. But it'll be Friday, July 10th. Uh, quick shout out to our seed fund. Um, if you've been following TWIG this year, at the beginning of the year, uh, we have really pushed for people to apply for this membership scholarship. Uh, so you have to be a TWIG member to receive it, uh, but we have funds to give away. We want people to continue their education, um, continue empowering their communities by learning more and going to conferences or workshops. Obviously, now that a lot of things are virtual, some things were canceled this year or postponed, um, but we still have these funds and we still want to support you. So uh, we are going to have a running list of virtual opportunities on our website. And this just kind of shows you how to get to it, how to navigate on our website to the member scholarship page. Uh, so some conferences have gone virtual, some are free now, but not all of them are. Um, and if you find something that you want to attend that will help, um, help bring more education about sustainability to your life and to our TWIG community, uh, we want to support you. So just a uh, shout out to our TWIG Seed Fund. We have funds available. We want to help you. Uh, the scholarship application is on the website. Also, today is World Environment Day. Yay, so World Environment Day is June 5th. Um, and we wanted to give a shout out to Socket, uh, which is Metro Nashville Sustainability Outlet. They are doing some awesome things today for World Environment Day. They are sharing tips from local sustainability experts. And we have a lot of TWIG members that have shared videos. Um, 
and showing things that you can do at home to be sustainable. So uh, they are releasing the videos. Uh, Jennifer, I know you're in here. Have the videos been posted? Or are they posting later today? They are there. There's still maybe a few tweaks. It'll all be perfected by noon, but if anybody's curious and wants to get a first look, they are there at socket.nash.gov slash world. Excellent. Yay. So yes, watch the videos and create and upload your own because everyone we know um, sustainability is still top of mind, even though you're at home. Um, and we'd love to see your tips and tricks and things that you've been working on. Um, so just a little preview. We have, these are some of our Twig members that many of you know have uploaded videos. Uh, so please go check that out. Um, go back. There's the link, socket.nashville.gov slash, oh, did it got, ugh, it got cut off. Uh, we'll fix that link. Um, we'll share it on our social media. Uh, but yes, check out the videos. Happy World Environment Day. Um, cancellations, uh, just for the time being, we are still remaining virtual for all of our opportunities, um, but we will stay in touch weekly with our newsletter and on our website and socials and our our community calendar is full of virtual events offered by many different organizations around environment and sustainability. So uh, if you know about other events and want us to put them on there, just email us and we will get that up. Um, and hopefully we'll, we will all be in person soon. Okay, and just our final slide, uh, we wanted to say that um, Twig is a supporter and an ally of the social justice movements that have swept the country. And uh, we wanted to show that uh, we stand by our marginalized and black communities to listen, to learn, and to take action toward environmental, racial, and social justice. This is all part of the future of sustainability that we want to be a part of, and that we want to um, show that sustainability and equality are incredibly important topics and they're necessary topics. So. Uh, we just wanted to release that statement. And um, if you have anything to share with us, feedback, we'd love to hear it. There is our Gmail right there. And that is the end of the announcements. Thank you everyone for coming today. Thank you so much, y'all. Great, great meeting. Yay. Thank Talk you. Miss you guys. Happy World Environment Day. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Thanks, it was, Kanita. Uh, environment Day. Yeah, what is it? Awesome. Happy Environment Day and free National No National Donut Day too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> excellent day. <laughs> Um, and for everyone who's still on, we will get this, uh, we are recording the meetings and we will get this posted on the website too. So uh, definitely you can review and share and that'll be great. Hey, good to see folks. Thank you all. Thank you all. Have Thanks. a great day and a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye everybody. Happy weekend. Thanks. I'm going to end the meeting. <laughs>